Back in October, Acer unveiled a handful of new Chromebooks, and one of them was of particular interest to us because it has the new Companio 828 chipset inside, and we've not had our hands on any Chromebook with that new kind of mid-tier ARM processor from MediaTek, but we do today. And we have the Acer Chromebook 514 with the Companio 828 inside. So let's take a look. So Acer was kind enough to send over this review unit. Uh, we'll be taking a deeper dive into it. We've had, if you've been around the YouTube channel here lately, we've had a bunch of stuff just kind of come in the office all at one point. But honestly, this is one of the ones I'm most excited to check out and get my hands on because this device has a chipset inside that we've been waiting for. Now, if you recall, we had the, uh, the Spin uh, 513, I get their models mixed up. I think it's 513. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, with the Companio 1380 in it, uh, that was a pre-production device. We only had it for like a few days and had to send it right back, but it was a part of their CES announcements, and that one was really awesome. We're excited to get a full production model of that one, uh, but again, this one was announced back in October, and the reason this one's interesting, it looks like we got a case in here as well. I was wondering, like, this box is huge for a Chromebook. Uh, the reason this one's really compelling is because this one slots itself a little bit more closely to something like the Snapdragon 7, 7C Gen 2 processor. So this isn't like flagship level, you know, Core i5 kind of performance, but it should be a lot faster than previous ARM chips that we've had while getting nice battery life and being able to produce nice thin devices. And so ultimately uh, the Chromebook, uh, while it's kind of interesting, Really what's most interesting is the chipset inside this thing. So before we jump in, let me verify what we got sent here. And it says, yep, so this is the 864. Uh, so eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, Companio 828 inside, and this one does have a touch screen. They have touch and non-touch. I think they've got nine or 10 different variations of this, but the low point uh, price point that you're gonna be able to really go and buy this thing for is about 409 MSRP. Uh, it's actually starting to show up on Amazon. It, that is the uh, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage model with no touch screen. Um, and then this one, I think that we have here is 459, I think. Um, so, and they range anywhere between like 400 and 500 dollars again those are msrp prices as this thing starts to show up at places like best buy you know it'll go on sale it might show up for a little bit less than this so i, I would bet this kind of device is going to start becoming available for something closer to you know the 350 to 400 dollar range as time goes on but before we hop in the box let's uh let's see what this guy's all about here uh, let's see if i can open this without oh, there we go without destroying the box completely that out of here. Oh, this is a nice sleeve. So this is a 14 inch device uh, as denoted by the model number 514. Uh, no weird aspect ratios here. So like on the, uh, the 513, for instance, we have a three by two ratio on a, uh, the Flex 5i that we unboxed uh, shortly, uh, like a week ago or so. You know, it's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So we're, we're starting to get all these different aspect ratios. I don't know if they're gonna be shipping this thing. Uh, I think the listing on Amazon right now has this with it. Um, and sometimes Acer sends us these things and we're like, oh, this is cool. Uh, it's antimicrobial apparently. So uh, yeah, my bacteria is not getting on this thing. Don't confuse that with antiviral. Uh, it's not gonna ward off the coronavirus or anything. Uh, but it is antimicrobial. Uh, it's nice and padded and you know, it's a laptop sleeve, but if that comes in the box, it's always just a nice added bonus. So let's put that aside and get to what we're actually here for. These are always so much fun to deal with. Here we go. All right, a little bit of paperwork, some shipping labels, all that good stuff. Uh, real quickly, we'll take a look at the charger. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Two piece block as we normally get with these lower end devices, but obviously USB type C. Um, and again, I, I do like the two piece blocks normally. Uh, they're not as cool looking, but they're way more functional if you're dealing with like a power strip or something like that. And then we've got the normal, uh, well, that's interesting. In the box from Acer, we've got an, an Amazon label in here. So uh, apparently this thing is gonna be on Amazon first, uh, clearly. So I keep saying it'll show up at Best Buy. Uh, maybe it won't, maybe it'll be an Amazon Amazon exclusive type thing, but you know, that will remain to be seen. But let's get all of this off the table here and get back to this Chromebook. So we've got the kind of lighter silver version of uh, Acer's 
um, aluminum. So they, they sometimes have that kind of darker gray. They've got some almost black. They've got like a greenish dark gray. And then they've got this, which is the kind of light silver. And uh, it feels like it's an aluminum top here. Uh, definitely a plastic bottom, but again, it's an arm chip, so there are no fan ports or anything anywhere. It's a nice solid uh, one piece kind of construction down here on the bottom. Um, and as far as ports go, it looks like we've got a single USB type C on one side and then on the other an A, another USB type C headphone microphone jack. So nothing crazy going on there. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm looking for speaker ports, but they're on the inside because I, I think this one comes with upward firing speakers. All right, so let's crack this thing open. And again, this is the Chromebook 514. It's not the Spin 514, so this is not a, a convertible Chromebook. Uh, but you know, it's got the nice little ergo lift hinge thing kind of going on. Uh, upward firing speakers, and we do get a glass trackpad this time around. Additionally. Uh, it does feel like this is a plastic keyboard area too, but ultimately even though it's plastic it it feels Pretty sturdy here. I mean again when you get Chromebooks that are all plastic on the bottom There's not a ton they can do to, to make it super firm, uh, but it doesn't feel bad It doesn't feel cheap or super flimsy here uh, And obviously that that lends to the overall lightness of this device. It's under three pounds So um, it's you know, it feels nice and thin which is what you expect again from an arm powered device We want thinness here um, and the keys feel pretty nice and the keyboard isn't wiggling around or anything like that. So I'm going to take a second and get logged in and we will kind of go through some of the, you know, speed stuff and, and just see kind of how this thing feels actually as I'm setting it up. Okay. So after getting this thing logged in, set up a couple things I can note that are actually pretty cool about this one. So the keyboard feels really good. Like this is a really good keyframe. It's kind of quiet. Uh, but there's quite a bit of travel. There's backlighting here, and honestly, just typing on it feels really good. Even though there is a bit of give in the chassis, you can kind of see that there. I mean, it's not a ton, and like around the edges, it feels nice and sturdy, but kind of in the center parts, it's it's a little wobbly. Uh, it, it didn't really affect the typing. Like the typing part felt really nice and sturdy, and so uh, good keyboard here. And the trackpad is exceptional. Um, with, with a 14 inch device, they have room to put in a plenty large trackpad. It's all glass. Uh, the click sounds great. And the feel of that click is awesome. This is a really, really fantastic trackpad here. And then the other notable thing you see here are upward firing speakers. So I went ahead and pulled up a track. This is gonna be a little bit loud, so prepare yourselves here, because uh, these speakers are loud. There's no bass, none whatsoever. Like they just rolled the bass all the way off. But you get some mids and a lot of highs, which is going to be good for conference calls and video calls and all that kind of stuff, which at the end of the day, that's really what this is more meant for. So let's uh, let's play that. So I mean that's I'm talking at very full volume here, and it's loud. So you're not gonna have a hard time hearing uh, hearing people whenever you're in calls and stuff like that because it should uh, replicate you know spoken audio pretty well because again mid range high range that's kind of where you get into those conversational tones. So the one other thing uh, that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, it's it's what I'm wondering, honestly, and I'm gonna flip this thing back around here real quick to pull this up, is, is how well this thing performs. Here's what I can tell you, um, right out of the gate, as far as just moving around the interface of setup, you know, navigating to go to get to Epidemic Sound, uh, things feel really quick. Uh, it, it reminds me so much of something like the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5, again, the Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 that when you're doing general web type tasks, uh, everything feels pretty good. So I've pulled up Chrome Unboxed here and you can just see, you know, scrolling is, is nice and quick. Again, you know, we have ads on our site and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of images here, a lot of stuff to load in and pinch zoom seems to move around pretty well. I go into overview mode without a whole lot of, of worry. Uh, frames aren't dropping all over the place. So, so far this thing looks pretty good, but what I want to do is actually run a quick octane test of this thing in, uh, in uh, incognito and actually just see, again, I've got some, you know, 
my normal extensions and stuff running, but incognito turns most of those things off uh, and just see exactly what we can get here. Okay, so I've got the Octane run, and yes, I know Octane is deprecated, but because it's an older benchmark, uh, Octane helps us to kind of go, okay, this is what we used to have this many years ago. And this score, 26,381, uh, is right on par with what we get from the Snapdragon 7C Gen 2. And that's not actually very shocking. Uh, you know, the, the performance feels along that same line. I'm sure once I get into the review process with this and really get rolling into a bunch of stuff and you know, we're going to see some hiccups from here to there. Like I haven't gotten to try, you know, plugging this into external monitors. I know this, the gen two will push a quad HD, but not my widescreen quad HD. Maybe this one will, I'm not sure. Um, you know, and it's, it'll, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing handles multitasking and all that kind of stuff. Acer touts in, in their rundown with the reviewer guide they gave us, uh, like 19 and a half hours of uh, video test. They probably run that at 80 or hundred nits screen brightness. So, you know, that's not like cranking the screen super high, but they're also seeing web browsing in the 15, 16 hour range. And so that would be really, really compelling to have a device like this with a great trackpad and a nice keyboard, a good screen. It's an IPS display. It's, it's 1080. I know we didn't really talk too much about it. There's not a whole lot notable going on here with this. Uh, it's a pretty standard screen. It is IPS. So like I can see it off angle here, just not that bright. So even if I crank this thing all the way to full, um, it's not probably not going to blow the shot out too much. Maybe these spots in here might a little bit, uh, but I think I, my guess just looking at it's probably one of those 250 nit screens, but it's got anti-glare. So a 250 screen with anti-glare, yeah, it, it's pretty usable in most scenarios. So again, this thing isn't going to blow anybody away from any perspective. It's not going to be, you know, the best performing Chromebook you can buy. It's not going to be, you know, the Chromebook with the absolute best screening bar, the best speakers, but it, it might be the one with the best trackpad. I'm, I'm really impressed with this thing. But we have to test those battery claims and, you know, to see how the display holds up and the keyboard and the trackpad. But honestly, so far, so good here. I think Acer's put together a really decent package in this, and especially if we can get down to the price point where we're starting to see a $350 kind of spot with this one. I think it could sell pretty well. I think it could be a great Chromebook for a lot of people. But all of this hinges on the performance of the Companio 828 inside here. And there are going to be a lot of other Chromebook makers building devices with the 828, the 1380, the Snapdragon 7C Gen 2, and then the Gen 3 that's still coming. ARM Chromebooks are coming, and so a lot a lot rides on how well these ARM processors can do in actual day-to-day -day tasks, Android apps, and all that kind of stuff, which we will be testing and reviewing for the full review of this device. But that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.